As I move on to video number 54 of this Expedition Camper build-out video, a little recap for you. Bought an Expedition truck, mounted up a fiberglass pass-through frame, cut a big hole, mounted it, installed it, built the Expedition Camper, installed that, and built a little bit of a frame around the pass-through because it had rounded edges and that didn't work for the way I was going to have it seal. And then finally, the snows melted, was able to get out and do a full pass-through articulation test. So going back to my video from a while ago, let's see how I was planning to design it. And now let's revise that design to accommodate the actual additional flex that this truck is providing. Go ahead and do a real flex test. Once the, the snow melts away and the dirt isn't just completely muddy as it has been. So I can do a real true flex test outside, really twisting these chassis rails, seeing what this, this chassis can do and how much flex I'm gonna get so I can really see if my design will work. Because right now my idea is to essentially create a frame on the back of the camper here and the, the, the cab frame fits between those two with seals in, on both sides that are compressible so that it can move in both sides or can have this kind of move, you know, this twist between each side and yet still retain a seal and be sealed all the way around from wind and rain and stuff like that. So that's the idea behind that. Welcome back to my channel. Howdy, howdy. It's great to have you back. And after doing this full articulation test in the last video, and I say full articulation test, nearly full articulation, but as well as I could do with the boulders and the conditions I had available to me, but a good articulation test nonetheless, I found out they have more articulation than I had anticipated between the subframe and the camper. So I've got to go back and redesign my password. So after the articulation test that we did, the truck proved to be more capable than anticipated, which is great. It's fantastic. It's, it's a mighty truck. And I'll tell you just roughly how mighty it was. Basically put one tire up on about a 30 inch boulder, 30 inch tall boulder, and the other tire opposing side on a similarly height boulder. Uh, in the process of doing that, the truck actually moved that 30 inch boulder, like just kind of rolled it about a foot out of the way instead of just going up on it, which it finally did go up on it. It moved it without any even recognition that it was moving it. And so they're seeing it by my own eyes. So the bottom line is it has a lot more articulation of flex than anticipated. I expected that probably somewhere in the order about five inches of cab to camper vertical plane differential right there, was I think we right. measured it at one point in time up to five and a half inches in one of our bigger moves going up a pretty steep hill on one side steep enough that I felt okay that's plenty I don't want to go any anymore and in doing that putting it up on that steep hill we could get about five and a half inches of movement between the cab and camper which was a lot more than I anticipated my buddy Rob and I figured we could probably get it up to about six inches in one direction with more flex really pushing it to more extreme levels now I'm not intending this to be a rock crawler it's got a big house on the back of it right it's intended for global long distance and domestic travels right it's not anticipated to just go rock crawling with it the whole house and everything and in, in, inside of it to support two people living out of it but nonetheless I gotta now redesign my pass-through this is a bit of work because my pass-through I'd already built it onto the cab and so it's glued on it's attached I've got a, a rectangular frame that's on there I was anticipating two rectangular frames interconnecting together with seals some really highly compressible foam on both sides that would insulate it, along with double weather tight seals between those so it create a weather tight seal airtight and effectively nearly watertight any water that did get in there would actually have a way to pull out or run out and not get in between the two the cab and the camper but, uh, that means i have to build this this frame roughly you know call it you know six inches out on the outside and six inches in the inside which dramatically reduce the opening of the pass-through i'm not okay with that there's a couple other options i'm playing with but i came up with i think it's gonna a far better easier option uh, i do have to have a custom made flexible uh, pass-through cover made but i think i've got it all figured and out speaking of pass-through let's come on over here to the other side we'll take a look at the notes over here it is see there's our movement there about five inches on that big rock. If we look at this movement, see that's five inches right there. And so, and I think we got five and a half at one point. Vertically, the nice thing is it doesn't really move very much. An inch up to, uh, I'm gonna say up to two inches. So that's a fairly easy one to work out. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this weather strip cover right here. It's gonna come out 
and I'm going to have the same thing coming down the sides. We're just going to have to be out to here to make sure I can cover this moving out to this more extreme angle of movement out here, the flex. So if that's five inches, we know we can get. I'm going to go at least six, and I'm probably just going to go more or less about almost to the extrusion here. And if I do that, yeah, it's going to give you right about eight inches, maybe even a tad more. So more than enough. That'll be my hard frame, which the hard frames are really there to keep wind and hands from coming in and give me an attachment point for this fabric flex joint, I guess I'll call it. A lot of little details to figure out in designing it. Do I Velcro it? Do I snap it? Do I attach with magnets? Do I have it sewn in? Do I do a big zipper? Do I do snaps? Do I do something that can easily pull away? Hence the Velcro or magnets versus snaps uh, or something else. Some little turnbuckle, but then it's a pain going all the way around trying to undo all those. I'm really thinking of doing it with elastic. I think that'll be easy. It'll be able to be pulled apart if someone really torques on it instead of it breaking or busting something. And yet it'll hold it tight and it's easily repairable, fixable, and adjustable. And we'll see. I've got a great channel in here. Keep all water will drain away and all that stuff. And so, yeah, I think it's going to work out just fine. Just got to do some unfortunate modifications to my frame I already have here. That's the downside. But hey, it's all doable. Good idea. Working it out in my head. So, as this process happens, it's very iterative. <laughs> iterative, one step at a time. Just keep iterating, thinking through things, thinking through ideas, researching materials, ideas that are th uh, solutions that people come up with, and then finally come up with a solution that will work for me and what I'm doing or what I want. So, taking what I have right now and the new amount of flex that I found that I have and this squared off frame that I do have, I think I'll use the squared off frame for some primary seals to put some bulb seals on that and also uh, still glue on some, call it weather shielding to or rain drip shields around the top and the sides of the pat on the camper front wall to shed any water away and then the primary seals to keep any water air out as they do rotate on each other in some kind of a rub strip. And then I'll probably do some kind of a fabric seal on the inside of the frame that would be highly flexible because it does have to flex from roughly a total length of somewhere between about 8 to 12 inches to roughly about double that. It not only has to be flexible but also be airtight, watertight, and comfortable to crawl over and of course replaceable and durable. And it probably have some kind of a clasp or magnets to pull it tight and keep those on one side, likely on the cab side. I think they'll be the easier place to move them, but I'm still debating a couple different options there and ways to do that. This is similar to what I've seen on actually some other campers. So in now that I'm going through a little memory lane here in some of those and showing some pictures of those, it's similar to those, but just a little bit different design for, for how I'm going to do it with a primary seal and a secondary seal in something that's very easy to remove and also still seal up. And also going back to my original design video, I have both a door on the cab and a door on the camper that will lock out the pass-through. So I can lock out the cab should it be left open and also lock the camper should the cab be open or if I need to close that off for some reason. So these are things I'm thinking through. If you have ideas, please do suggest and share. Meanwhile, I'm moving forward, building out the interior of this camper. Coming up, thank you for watching and subscribing. Why don't you come along up here with me for the journey? Oh God! Oh no! 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 Oh God! Are you okay? Woo! I gotta say, GoPro. I don't know how you survive.